Back in part one, we ran our Junkyard Gen 6 454, carbureted with a Vortec and an intercooler. Now the question is, how much better are aftermarket aluminum heads under boost? If we ask the question, which is better, an aluminum aftermarket head or a factory iron head? The answer seems pretty simple, but there's more to the question than that. You see, our 1998 Gen 6 454 came with factory iron oval port heads. But unlike the previous generation, the Gen 5, our 1998 version came with full-size oval ports. Now the previous Gen 5 came with a small little peanut port hit. So these new, <laughs> the latest Gen 6 stuff, flow even better than those peanut ports. Now they don't flow as well as the previous rectangular port heads that they use on the performance versions in the late 60s and early 70s, but they do flow a lot better than the peanut port hits. So now the question is, does an aftermarket aluminum performance head flow better than these big oval ports? Also seems like an easy answer. But again, there's more to the question than that. You see, our Brodex race right heads that we installed on this Gen 6 454 definitely flow more than the iron factory heads. But, and here's the thing, the iron heads used on our Gen 6 motor have really small, efficient combustion chambers. Ours measured 102 cc's. Now our Brodex race right heads, the chambers on those measured 122 cc's. That's a difference of 20 cc's. That's a big change in compression. So now the question is, we know the Brodex heads flow more, and we think therefore would offer more power. But do they still offer more power when there's such a dramatic drop in compression? To add to that, we also ran this comparison both naturally aspirated and supercharged with our Vortex supercharger. So is it better naturally aspirated? Is it better supercharged? Does it even matter? Let's find out. We've covered some general guidelines on our test, but here's what this video is all about. It's a direct back-to-back -back cylinder head test. Now there are a number of variables for us to discuss about this head test. First of all, we're going from an iron factory head to an aluminum aftermarket head. In this case, we're testing the 1998 Vortec Gen 6 454 head to a set of Brodex race right aluminum heads. So we've got a change in material, which is very important because on a boosted application, usually aluminum heads are preferred because they help reduce the chance of detonation. So in addition to the material change, we also are changing the port size and shape. So we're going from an oval port head on the factory heads to a rectangular port head on the Brodex race right heads. Now, more important than the shape of the head, uh, the shape of the port is actually the flow rate. And this is important because we're going to have to get into this a little bit. Now, we're going from an oval port to a rec port, but we're also going to a bigger port volume, and we're also going to more flow. So in the case of the Brodex race right heads, they flow 100 CFM more than the factory heads do. Somewhere near 250 to 260, somewhere near 350 to 360. But it's also important to note, and I know guys like to go just by, <laughs> just by airflow alone, but the reality is that our Brodex heads flow 100 CFM more, but they do that at 700 valve lift. Because you gotta measure the airflow at the different valve lifts. So at 700 lift, the Brodex head flows almost 100 CFM more. That's less important because our camshaft we're running is not a 700 lift camshaft. So if you're gonna take advantage of all that airflow, you have to have a camshaft that can do that. What I'm saying is the head upgrade would be worth even more power if we had an even bigger camshaft, but we didn't have that. So the other uh, concern is the change in chamber size, and this is a big deal. In addition to the head flow, we're also looking at the chamber size. So we're going from on the iron oval port head, we've got 102 cc's versus 122 cc's on the Brodex race right heads. So we're, we're, we have a dramatic drop in compression. We're going from somewhere near nine to one to less than eight to one. So it's a big drop in compression, especially when you talk about getting down into the 7.8 or 7.9 to one compression. That's really low for almost any application. But since we've got boost, we'll be able to make up for it at least a little bit. So that's what we're doing. We've got our cylinder head test, iron versus oval port or iron versus aluminum and, and all these other changes that we mentioned. And we're also gonna do that naturally aspirated and supercharged. We'll show it to you both ways. Let's get to those results. Before we get to our head test, I'll just recap really quickly. If you haven't seen the video in part one, check it out. Uh, if I haven't showed it to you already, it's gonna be right here. But we ran our Gen 6 454 with a comp cam 
and a dual plate intake and carburetor. This was the NA power output. It made 426 and 475 or 6 foot pounds. Here's what happened after we installed the Vortec supercharger with no intercooler, just blowing through the carburetor. Big power, like 790 horsepower or so, 713 foot pounds. And this is what happened after we installed the air to water intercooler, because even on a blow through application, an air to water intercooler is always a good idea. And we're talking about almost 850 horsepower, 847 horsepower. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we did our head swap. To run our cylinder head test, we obviously had to remove the vortex because I wanted to demonstrate what the cylinder head test does, both naturally aspirated and after we install the supercharger. So we removed the vortex supercharger and ran our motor naturally aspirated with the stock iron heads. And again, our baseline 427 horsepower, 476 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we installed the Brodex heads. Now we also had to replace the intake manifold because we, and we ran an, uh, an RPM air gap just like we did with the oval port heads, but we ran an RPM air gap with the rectangular port heads or, or designed to work with the rectangular port heads. So here's what happened when we installed our Brodex race right heads. And it was an interesting deal. Um, we lost power down low, which is actually kind of what we expected. And I think that that's primarily because of the change in compression. So this thing made, but we picked up power up top. So if you take a look at the curve, you'll see that the crossover point, and you'll, re, you'll hear me refer to crossover point a lot in a lot of the videos, and that's the point where one starts making more power than the other. So our crossover point on this one was 4,700 RPM. So equipped with the Brodex heads, our Gen 6 454, now ultra low compression, less than eight to one, 7.8 to one, made 455 horsepower. The peak torque, as you can see, was very flat here, but was 459 foot-pounds of torque. So this is an interesting comparison, run naturally aspirated. The Brodex heads, it looks like it took advantage of the airflow at the top, but lost out down low because of compression. So an interesting comparison. Now we could mill this head, or you could obviously team it with a different piston and, and get the compression back up. But this was our test. This was the head upgrade, naturally aspirated, on our Gen 6 454 with that small comp cam in it. Now let's take a look and see what happened after we installed the Vortex Supercharger. After running our test naturally aspirated, comparing the Brodex heads to the factory oval ports, we ran the same comparison supercharged. So this was kind of a cool deal. We installed our Vortex Supercharger with the air to water intercooler, and it was just the intercooler that we had from CX Racing, a single core deal. But we've run it over a thousand horsepower, so it seems to work well and flow pretty well. The charge temperature drop is nice with that core, and also you don't have a big change in um, big change in boost running across the core, so it's not a big drop, not a big pressure drop. So this was our supercharged combination with the Vortex supercharger and the factory oval port heads. And again, we had that comp cam and, and dual plane intake, and we were blowing through a CSU blow through carburetor, which worked pretty well. So we made 847, 848 horsepower, so almost 850 horsepower with the Vortec and the factory um, iron head. So that's pretty good. And obviously you could port the iron heads and that would, that would improve them a lot also. I'm sure there are guys out there that have done that. So if you have, if you're a porting guy and you've ported those iron heads, let me know what kind of power or le what, let me know what kind of airflow you can get to with those iron heads because I'm curious to see if guys have ported those to improve them because that might be a, obviously a cheaper way to go than buying aftermarket aluminum heads. But here's what happened on our Vortex Supercharge combination where we added the Brodex heads. So as you can see, um, the Brodex heads picked up quite a bit. Now we didn't change the pulley on the Vortex to keep the boost even, we just <laughs> ran it and found out what happened with the same pulley combination. So equipped with the Brodex heads, the power output exceeded 900 horsepower, 904 horsepower. We had a little bit of uh, funny things going on here down low, below 3500. And honestly, we, there was, uh, the, mo the air fuel was rich down there. We didn't spend a lot of time tuning the carburetor. We're kind of more interested in the peak numbers and, and above 3,500. But so we could have maybe dialed that in a little bit. But the interesting thing is that we didn't see the same trade-off in power uh, with the supercharged combination that we did with the NA combination. 
And, and maybe we would, if this was fuel injected, we could dial in the air fuel exactly right and spend a lot of time tuning it. Maybe we'd see that maybe they would be closer together. But at any rate, the Brodex head upgrade on the supercharged combination was worth good power and the power improved above 4,000 RPM all the way up to the peak. And we would expect if we ran it out even higher than that, because we have a rising boost curve, that the gains would be even greater. So now let's take a look. I'll show you what happened to the boost curve when we put the Brodex heads on. So that's interesting stuff too. Okay, the final <laughs> missing piece of the puzzle here on our cylinder head test is actually the effect that the head test had on boost. Because when we installed the Brodex aluminum heads, they obviously had a bigger chamber, um, which, and because they made more power. So that combination of things, typically we would expect to see a drop in boost. Because when it makes more power and it's flowing more air, it uses up more of the air supplied by the blower. There's le less restriction there, so the boost comes down. The same thing with chamber volume. If we increase the chamber volume and reduce the compression by increasing that chamber volume, or you could put a dish piston in it as well, it has to take up more volume. The amount of air that's in there has to take up more volume. So we see a lower boost, and that's exactly what we saw in this combination. So if we take a look, this is our boost curve supplied by our Vortec with the stock heads. And then here's the boost curve in red supplied by the Vortec with our um, Brodex heads. And you can see out here we drop boost by from 15.8 to 17.2. So we dropped it about at the top about a pound and a half of boost. And that's good because anytime you drop the boost pressure and make more power, that's nothing but good because you've done two things. Obviously, you've made more power, but at a lower boost pressure, you've also dropped the charge temperature. So every drop in, in pressure was going to be a drop in temperature. Temperature is one of the things that creates problems with term, in terms of detonation. So anything that you could do to run less boost and make more power, always good. And that's exactly what happened with our cylinder head test. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did you think about our test between the Brodex race right heads and the cast iron oval port heads on our Gen 6 motor. Personally, I thought this was pretty cool. I really like this test. It was exciting to see not just a change in airflow because we know that when we put a set of aftermarket heads on or replace the factory heads, especially when they flow 100 CFM more like the Brodex heads did, we expect a big power gain. But there was a little twist in there because we saw such a big change in compression. I mean, we went from like nine to one down to 7.7 .7 or 7.8 to one. So it was a big change in compression and that also hurts power. So we had some help and we had some hurt and we had to find out what worked better. And in this case, obviously on the NA motor, we lost a little bit of power down low, which we kind of expected from the compression, but the added airflow made itself known at the top. So the Brodex heads made more peak power and in the range that where you're going to be accelerating the car, it would definitely be useful. But with a supercharger, things were even better. So we improved the power, lowered the boost, and the motor was happier. All that's good stuff. So a head swap on a supercharged junkyard motor, definitely a good idea, even if you lower the compression. I'm Richard Holdner, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll keep the big block stuff coming and everything else.